people and they were given power, power to do what Jesus did. Because the Holy Spirit came, he also came to give you power to do what Jesus did. Lay hands on the sick, to see miracles, signs, and wonders, to bless his name, to walk with authority and dominion, to have a life of godliness. Jesus came and sent the Holy Spirit so that you can do that same thing. And so today we rejoice and then say, God, thank you for giving us the Holy Spirit. Jesus, we praise you for sending the Holy Spirit. We thank you that we have the power to do. God, we thank you that we are people that know how to work for the kingdom of God. God, we thank you that we're not selfish. We're not always worried about what we got going on, but we are kingdom minded people. God, we thank you that we will love like never before. We will serve like never before. We will make you clear and visible to the world. Jesus, we say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Even when things don't look good, we know that you're good and it's going to be all right. We thank you for sending us a counselor to help us through every situation that we go to. And so, God, we say hallelujah and we praise your name. Come on, shout hallelujah. 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 God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. We serve an awesome God. He's an awesome God. He's a mighty God. He's a holy God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah. We praise your name, Jesus. Our God is an awesome God, and he reigns forever and ever. Our God is an awesome God, and he reigns forever and ever. Our God is an awesome God, and he reigns forever and ever. Our God is an awesome God, and he reigns forever and ever.
circumstance, God. Lord, you're so awesome. You're awesome, God. If we could just think about it, if you just close your eyes just for a minute and think about all the awesome things that God has done for us. Everything. He woke us up this morning. He gave us that new job, that new house, that car. He gave us peace. Peace. He is so awesome. He heals our body. He's our protector. He's so mighty. God, we thank you, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. You're so awesome, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Bless your name. Glory to your name, God. You're so awesome, Jesus. Come on, y'all. Help me say, our God. Our God is awesome. He can move mountains. He, can move mountains. he keeps me in the valley. Hides me from the rain. Hey, yeah, our God. Heals me when I'm broken. Strength where I've been weakened. Forever he shall reign. Yeah. Come on, say that again with us. Our God. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. Hey, my God is awesome. Forever he Forever shall reign, he yeah. Reign. Hey, my, my God is awesome. How many of you know that he's awesome? Awesome. He's awesome, yeah. Awesome. He's so awesome, yeah. Awesome. He's awesome, my he's awesome. awesome. He's strength where I've been weak in these. Awesome. He's my provider, my protector, he's awesome. Praise his 
holy name. Hallelujah, bless your name. Glory to your name. You're awesome. You're so awesome, Jesus. You're my way maker. You're my miracle worker. You're my mind regulator. You're my provider. He's my healer. He's my protector. My deliverer. He's awesome. 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 He's mighty. He's mighty. He's mighty. He's mighty. He's awesome. Hey, hey, hey. thing when we can brag on Jesus, amen. You may be seated. How many know that he's worthy of our praise? Actually, we can't praise him enough. He's been so good, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Okay, right there where you are, just lift your hand and begin to thank Him for what He's done for you today. Today, today. Thank you, Lord. Somebody said He woke me up this morning. Somebody said He clothed me in my right mind. For that I can say, Thank you, Lord. That I can walk, that I can talk, that I can communicate. Yeah, thank you, Lord. You've been better to me than I've been to myself. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Would you, would you welcome Reflections of Christ as they sing a special this morning? Come on, give him a hand clap. Praise the Lord, everybody. It's just one reflection tonight, today, <laughs> today, just one reflection. <laughs> one of the best things that we can give the Lord is our praise. And our worship. And um, I wanted to sing this song um, as an offering to the Lord. Has the Lord been good to anybody in this house? Uh, God has been real, real faithful to me. I, I feel like um, anything that I ask of the Lord, and this is the word, according to in faith, that he really does hear me. And I just thank God for just what he's done in my life. No, every, of course, you know, you don't always have everything that you want, but you surely have everything that you need in the Lord. Amen. And um, I just want to offer this praise to the Lord because of what he's done for me. If you allow me to minister in my own way. Amen. And we'll get out. I'll get out of your way. doing the loop. Oh Lord, we bless your name. And we lift our voices to say thank you.
and your mercy toward us. And your mercy toward us, yeah. For your goodness. And your mercy toward us. We offer praise. Hey. Help me out, Jason. Oh, Lord, we give you praise. And, oh, Lord, we bless your name. And we lift our voices to your mercy toward us for your goodness and your mercy toward us for your goodness and your mercy toward us we
How many can testify that God is good? He's good. Yeah. Bless the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. Bless. The name of Jesus, oh, he's my rock, and he's my fortress, he's my deliverer, in him. Will I trust? Everybody help me say, Praise the name of Jesus. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. All right, let's get into the word. Lift up your Bibles, please. Amen. Make our confession. Say, this is my Bible, God's holy word. I believe it and I receive it. Therefore, my life is filled with purpose. That is, to make God clear and visible to the world. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray that that is the utmost desire of your heart as you live it as a Christian is to make God clear and visible to the world. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn in your Bibles, please, to Joshua. Joshua chapter 6. And we're going to talk about the walls of Jericho. That's not our subject, but I really believe a lot of people have walls up, built they built up gigantic walls in their lives, and I'm believing, God, that today those walls are going to come tumbling down. Can I get anybody to believe with me on that? Today. Today, today, today. The walls will come down. And I'll be sharing actually two texts today, one out of Joshua and then the other out of Acts, um, one out of the Old Testament and, and one, out of, one out of the New Testament. And, and actually what is happening here is we find two people here who dared to believe God. And that's the subject of our message today. And I want you to say it because we're going to say it in a way of declaration. Say this after me. Say, I believe God. I want you to hear what you just said. Because many people think that believing in God and believing God is the same thing. It's not. Today, we declare that we believe God. In other words, we're going to take him at his word. Let me see if I can say it a little differently. We're going to show faith 
Because that's all faith is, is taking God at his word. Amen. Now faith. Now faith. When is faith? I can't hear you. Right now. Look at what it says here in chapter 6, verse 1. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out. And none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho. He said, I gave you Jericho. And the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. That word valor means mighty men of courage. Mighty men of courage. And ye shall march around or compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shall thou do six days, and seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day ye shall com compass the city seven times, and the priest shall blow with the trumpets, and it shall come to pass that when they make a loud blast with the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout. What shall they do? Shout. I can't hear you. Shout. Now shout it out. Shout. With a great shout, and the walls of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. Now let's look at cha Acts chapter 27. Acts chapter 27. If you're there, say praise the Lord. I'll wait just a second here for you to get there, because I want you to see that. Acts chapter 27, I'll start reading at verse 23. This is Paul talking. He said, For there stood by me this night and the angel of God. Who was it? Whose I am and whom I serve. Saying, Fear not, Paul. And that's what he's saying to you. You can put your name there this morning. Fear not, Paul. Thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer. For I believe God, that it shall be even as it was told me. Turn to your neighbor and say, I believe God. Notice in Joshua, the first thing God told him was that he had already given him the city. Did y'all see that? He didn't say, well, Joshua, look here. One of these days, that city is going to be yours. He didn't say that, did he? I said, he didn't say that, did he? Oh, he didn't say, I'm getting ready to give you the city, Joshua. But God was calling those things that, as, that be not as though they were. He proclaimed plainly that he had already given him the city of Jericho. Everybody say already. already. Listen, you're going to need some already faith this morning. Okay. You see, in the natural... The natural means circumstances before your eyes, what you see before your eyes in the natural. They had not possessed the city. The walls which were like 25 feet high and 20 feet wide. You could put a whole horse and chariot on the, up on top of the wall. In the natural, their enemies 
the inhabitants of the land still possess the city. I'm going somewhere, y'all. But God said, I know your enemies are still in the city. I know the walls are still standing. I know you're still outside of your promise. But I have already given you the city. God declare, in spite of what you see, are y'all listening this morning? In spite of what you see, I've already given you the city. It's already done. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's already done. Tell them, whatever you believe in God for, now y'all got to talk like you got some sense now. Tell them, whatever you believe in God for, come on, it's already done. I know you can't see it, but it's already yours. God says, I already spoke it. I already ordained it. God says, now get inside my brain. Get inside my thinking. It's already done. Many of you today, God has promised to do great things through you and for you. In your life, for your children, for your finances, for your ministry, for your businesses. You need to reach up and grab that thing. Well, let me ask you a question. Are you believing that someday yes, sir. the things God said was going to come to pass? Let me make it a little plainer. Some of you are believing that someday you'll get out of Egypt yeah. and make it to the promised land. You're believing that one day you'll get out of the pit into the palace. One day you're saying, I may be a shepherd boy today, but I'm going to be a king. Some of you have something on the inside of you that is causing you to stand up and stand out against all odds. It's making you believe a day is coming when you're going to get out of the project mentality and move into the suburbia mentality. Something on the inside is making you believe that a day is coming when you, you won't have to ride a taxi or, or a city bus to get around town, but you'll have your own car. Oh, I don't know. Y'all, I know y'all already riding, so don't worry about it. But that's for somebody that's listening me, uh, to me through streaming, and, and, and every day it's a, it's, it's a tedious task to, to grab enough money to catch a cab or Get on that city bus. God says, it's already done for you. Somebody hearing this message is believing that your son is going to be delivered from drugs or your prodigal daughter is coming home clothed in her right mind. Your business is about to blow up with prosperity. Come on, catch that this morning. Every bill that you have is about to be paid. You're going to be debt free. Can I get a better amen? Is there anybody here with faith enough to believe that's listening to me this morning that has faith enough to believe that it's already done? If you're, if you're a faith person hearing this message, if you're a faith per person believing God for a change in your life, then lift your voice right now and give God some praise. Oh, come on, somebody. Come on, get it out there in the atmosphere. Say, I believe God. We 
need to declare like Paul in the book of Acts chapter 27 on that ship that was sinking fast, but he got a word from God. And while the others were panicking and fearful, Paul spoke up and said, For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul. Thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, look at him. God has given thee all them that sail with thee. See, you better mind who you associate with. Wherefore, sirs, this is what Paul says, I believe God that it shall be even as was told to me. Maybe your life is, is like a sinking ship this morning. We all go through things, don't we? Life is filled with swift transitions. Life is filled with ebbs and flows, ups and downs, mountaintop experiences and valley experiences. Maybe your life is like that this morning. And you feel like you're about to go under. You're on the verge of a divorce or on the verge of bankruptcy or your son is about to be sent to prison or your daughter is all messed up. But you're like Paul standing on the bow of the ship and you're proclaiming even in the middle of the storm, even in the midst of your mess, even in the midst of your loneliness, your financial problems, but you're shouting three words. You're shouting, I believe God. Come on, somebody. You got to get it out this morning. You got to speak it out this morning. It's not, no longer can you sit there and not utter a word about it. No, you, you're going to get blessed by the fruit of your lips. You've got to speak that thing into existence. And God gave us the example when he said, God said this and God said that. And it was because he said it today. Open up your mouth and declare, I believe God. You might not have any evidence. I'm asking you to do something that's, not, that's strange. It's not common. God is asking us to do something that's uncommon. But how many know we serve an uncommon God? You may not have any evidence, but you have confidence that God is an on-time God. But I believe you ought to shout before, you, before you're debt free. Did you hear what I just said? I believe you ought to shout before you're a millionaire. You ought to shout before you get that new house. Oh my God. Before you get that new, new car. You ought to shout before your son come home because he's going to come home one day and say, Mama, I got saved and I got off a of mess. No, no, you need to shout now. Don't wait till it happens. Faith says now. You ought to shout before your daughter comes home and says, Jesus appeared to me in my car last night, Mama, and I, and I got the Holy Ghost, and, and, it, and it changed my life, and my, my life has been turned around. I encourage you to praise him right now before you see the manifestation of your miracle. Let me tell you something. For some of you, it's going to take a miracle. It's going to take a miracle. But God is not short in performing miracles. All he needs to see is faith. When God says, sees faith, he will go to work on your behalf. When God sees faith, 
You say, well, Pastor Kenny, you just don't know what I'm going through. You don't know what I've been, been involved in. Can I tell you this? There's nothing too hard for our God. There's nothing he can't do. There's nothing. Did you hear what I just said? The God that you serve, the God that we serve, there's nothing impossible for him. Glory, hallelujah. Now, let me tell you, I warn you a little bit. Let me warn you. Some people may tell you to quiet your praise. Because when you, when you really begin to praise God, it makes religious people nervous. They get the shakes. But God told Joshua, I've already given you the city. When you start thinking like God, when you start, when you, we, we, we won't go around saying someday I'll receive it. You will declare in, it in front of God and the devil and everybody God said it, therefore I believe it. It's already done. You don't care who it is you're talking to. You can say, I don't see, I don't see it with my natural eyes, but it's with, within my spiritual eyeglasses. I can see that now, I can see that new car in my driveway. And really be careful, though, be careful who you talk to. Because you can talk to some of your friends and your neighbors and you tell them, man, I see that car out there. I see my new car. I see my new car. It's in the driveway. They're going to think you're nuts and they're going to talk you out of it. Don't let them talk you out of it. Because you're seeing what God sees. And a lot of people can't understand that. They don't, listen, they don't know the relationship you have with God. They can't go where you're going. They can't do what you're doing. It takes faith in the, in the spiritual world. It takes your faith. Without it, it's impossible to please God. But those who believe him, they must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder. How many know God is a rewarder? If you're needing a car right now, now don't get confused with this prosperity message. I believe in prosperity because the Bible talks about being pros prospering and being in health even as your soul prospers. But make sure your soul prospers. Yeah. That's it, sir. That name it and claim it and give it, uh, 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 nab it and grab it crowd. I'm not against it. I believe God is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. I really believe he will provide. No, let me put it this way. I believe he has uh, provided. Did you hear what I just said? It's already done. Let me tell you something. Everything you need is already done. God did it over 2,000 years ago when he hung and died, bled and died on that cross. But he didn't stay on the cross. He didn't stay in the grave on the third day. He got up from that grave with all power. And that same power that he got up with, he's entrusted to us. Turn to your name and say, I have the power. You better believe it. It's already done, honey. Quit asking God to do something he's already done. I've been believing God for my new car. I've been believing. Keep believing. Because it's already done. I, I just believe we're going to get out of this apartment and, 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 and God has a house for it. He, has, he already has it. It's already done. It's already done. Some people say, well, when I get to heaven, listen, hey, I ain't talking about heaven. I'm not talking about the sweet by and by. I'm talking about the nasty now and now. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm not just, I'm not giving you my opinion. 
Because Joshua could have, he could have aborted the plan with doubt and skepticism and unbelief. He could have put his own words against what God has already said. But if you'll go and read that book of chapter 6 in Joshua, you'll, you'll see that Joshua did exactly what God said. And, and as a result of obeying God and doing what he said, the walls came tumbling down. And can I say to you this morning, when you set yourself to agree with God and to believe God, not to believe in him, but to believe him, believe what he said, believe the promises. He made you great and precious promises. You have the promise right there in your midst. You have the promise. If you, the day you decide to, to, to take God at his word and believe the promise, you're going to have what you've been believing him for. Not until then. Not until then. Man don't control nothing. God does. Did you hear what I just said? Man is not in control. I don't care who's in the White House or who's in the outhouse. God is in control. He controls everything. Everything goes according to his plan. Turn to your neighbor and say, I believe God. I believe God. Tell him, I believe God. Let me tell you, there's a lot of opinions floating around here. A lot of opinions. Be careful. If those opinions don't line up with the Word of God, it's not the truth. It's not the truth. Say, I believe God. God, we thank you for your word today. I'm not done. I'm not done now. Don't, don't, don't close me down right now. In God's world, y'all, it's already done. And, and what I'm praying and believing God is that your spiritual eyes will be open today. that your, your, your spiritual eyes will be open. And some of you have already experienced God in this, in this situation. You, you already know that had it not been for God, you wouldn't be where you are today. You, you already know that. I mean, you, 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 you wouldn't have the house you're living in had it not been for God. <laughs> you wouldn't have the car that you're driving had it not been for God. You wouldn't have the health you have today had it not been for God. Some of y'all can testify. And you need to testify. The redeemed of the Lord ought to say so. The redeemed ought to tell somebody what good things God has done for them. If you've been redeemed, tell somebody. My God. You say, well, Pastor Kenny, why are you screaming and yelling and screaming? Because I'm excited about what God is doing in this season. It's a wonderful thing. I say it's an awesome thing. Oh, yes, it is. Oh, yes, it is. When you start thinking like God, then you'll start talking like God. When you start talking like God, you'll be doing according to Romans, Romans chapter 4, verse 17. You'll start calling those things as be not, that be not as though they were. You'll just start calling stuff. God, I, I have my new job. I have my promotion. That promotion is mine in the name of Jesus. That new car is mine. Did, did I say new? Somebody's going to get a new car. That new home is mine. Watch this. That a new anointing is mine.
That new power of the Holy Ghost is mine. Turn your neighbor and say, I have it. When you start acting in faith, it doesn't matter what the circumstances are saying. Because you know what God has already said. This is how you can praise God in the midnight hour. This is how you can go to bed at night even though you don't know where your son and daughter is. This is how you can keep a smile on your face when the doctors give you a negative report or when they come to to repossess your car. The the devil and, and some people might laugh at you and say, Your faith is not working. But you can say, devil, they may be taking this car from me. But you don't know the car that's coming. Matter of fact, right here, devil. I believe I'm going to get my praise on right now in front of your face. See, it's the praise of faith. You can say, devil, I was going to wait a while, but since you're trying to get on my nerves, I'm going to shout right now. Wait a minute, don't run away. I've got to praise and I've got to get it out. You see, the children of Israel didn't wait until the walls fell down to shout. They began to shout while the walls were still standing. All throughout the Bible, it declares God, for, for, for the people of God to shout unto the Lord. Psalms 5.11 says, but let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. Psalms 47.1 says, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. Ezra says, Ezra 3.13 says, So that the people could not discern the noise of the shout of joy from the noise of the weeping of the people. For the people shouted with a loud shout. And the noise was heard afar off. God does not tell us to shout So religious people can call us fanatics. Or they can call us emotional fools. There is a power in the shout of the child of God that causes hell to tremble. And I want you to get this revelation. There's something about when a child of God opens their mouth in the middle of hell and shouts hallelujah. Let me tell y'all something here. Yeah. Let me tell you something yeah. Let me tell you something. When I was a Baptist boy, we thought the word hallelujah was for sanctified people. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. We didn't say hallelujah. That's for the church of God in Christ. <laughs> no. But when I got a better understanding. And I knew what the word hallelujah meant. Not what it meant to me, but what it meant to God. And when I read where it said that's the highest praise you can give God, I I started saying hallelujah in the Baptist church. Hallelujah. Can you say hallelujah? Hallelujah. I know that's gonna make uh, that's gonna mess up your religion. <laughs> that's gonna make us. You're not used to that. Yeah, you know, we used to a quiet church, quiet. And I'm not against quiet. I'm not against it. I think there's a time to be quiet. 
But there's also a time to shout. There's also a time to give God praise. There's also a time to lift your hands. There's also a time to clap your hands. If, and let me tell you something. Let me put it, let me put it to you like this here. Like this here. If what I'm saying to you is not in the word of God, don't do it. Don't do it. But if it's in the word and you don't do it, you're going to miss out on your blessing. And I'm not trying to get anybody to miss out on what God is doing, can do in their life. No, I don't want anybody to miss out on what God has done in their life. Because God has laid it out there, folks. It's yours. It's yours right now. But it's up to you to take it. Nothing you get from God until or unless you receive it, it's not yours. Even salvation. You can wish all you, I wish I was saved. I really wish I was saved. I sure would like to be saved. No, not until you say yes to Jesus. Not until you say, Lord, I forgive me of my sin. I confess that I'm a sinner. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Lord, let me put it to you like this. It's real simple. Just say it like this. Lord, save me. No, we pray, we pray this long prayer. I go this long. Have you repeat this long thing? At the end of the service, I'll do it today. But really, all you have to say is, Lord, save me. Because it's a matter of the heart. It's not the condition of the, it's not so many of the words that you say or the condition of your body, but the condition of your heart. The Bible says you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead. Here's the promise. You shall be. Not you might be. You shall be saved. Unless I get accused of being a long-winded preacher, I'm fixing to shut it down. When you get a whole group of people together in unity, and in one accord, because the Bible says one puts a thousand to flight, two can put ten thousand to flight. Your shout will bring down strongholds. Did you hear what I just said? Your shout causes walls to crumble. Your shout will cause the thing between you and your destiny to vanish and disappear. I believe right now that walls are coming down. I believe that hindrances are coming, coming down. Barriers are being broken. I believe that. Your shout will cause your enemy to back up off of you. Your shout will cause you to forgive relatives that abused you. Listen to me. I believe your shout will cause you to forgive that mother or father that abandoned you. Sometimes all you have to do is shout. You, you don't need an interpreter. You just need to shout it out. If you just shout out, just shout, hey man, when you've been harboring bitterness and unforgiveness, just so the devil can hear you, just shout it out. Say, I forgive them. I, I don't know what happened to you. I don't know what, I know many things happen. Many bad things happen to people. I, I, I know that. But if you'll get to the place where you trust God enough to say, I forgive them. 
today I'm set free because I believe God. Because ladies and gentlemen, when you shout, you're not shouting, I believe in God. You're shouting, I believe God. My time is up. I thank you for yours. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Perhaps there's someone here today who say, Pastor Kenny, for the first time, I'm believing God. Pastor Kenny, I want to give my heart to Jesus. I want to receive him as Lord of my life. If that's you, would you lift your hand? I want to pray for you. And leads you in a prayer right now. So that can happen. Pastor Kenny, pray for me. I want to receive him into my heart. Come on, son, you got a word? The way the way that the prophetic works hand in hand with the pastoral ship of the church, they, they say the same thing all the time. Friday night, the Lord said, we didn't talk, Friday night, the Lord said, the atmosphere wants to hear your voice. Mm. He was talking to us, us. The atmosphere wants to hear your voice. That means that heaven and hell and everything in between knows the sound of your voice. And when you Put the word of God in it, things have to happen. It says that the angels have to go out and perform the word on your behalf. So today, Dad, again, and then we end it and we say, I shall live to see blank. Mm. And my goodness, if I did not hear that again today, and you talked about what God said is going to happen. And, and, and changing our lives and beginning and living off the fruit of our lips. And if you would even in your personal time, even if you want to say it now, you put out what you want to receive. Mm. So if you would declare in your own right, in your own place, I shall live to see blank. And you declare it over your family like me. I shall live to see my family saved. That's good, son. Declare those things. So even now, and I'm going to sit down, if you put something on your mind and say, I shall live to see. Come on, we do it together. One, two, three. I, I shall, shall live, live to, to see. see. Put, fill in the blank. Yeah, yeah. Fill in the blank. What do you yeah. want to see? I shall live to see. This is an exercise, yeah, Dad. I don't good. know how else to say it. Good. Put something in the blank. I, I shall live, live to see. see. Come on, declare like you know it's going to happen. I, I shall, shall live, live to see. Dead free. Come on, say it by faith. I, I shall, shall live, live to see. Blessed. One more time. I, I shall, shall live, live to see. see. And when you say that you've declared that you're going to see it and it's already going to happen, and so you're waiting on the manifestation of what God has put inside of your spirit to release. God bless you. For those of you who need to be saved, let's pray this prayer together. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I know without you I'm lost. I can't save myself. Come into my heart. Forgive me for my sin. Make me a new creature. Devil, get out of my life. I serve you no longer. Jesus is now my Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In your name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time and meant it, 
I want to say to you, welcome to the family of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, it's tithe and offering. Let's clap for joy. If you need an offering envelope, please raise your hand. And our ushers will be glad to put one in your hand. Come on, everybody. Are you blessed? Yeah. Raise your hand if you're blessed. If you're blessed. Yeah. Let me hear you say bless. 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 Heavenly Father, you said in Luke 6, 38, when I give, it shall be given to me. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give into my bosom. For with the same measure that I meet, it shall be measured to me again. Therefore, my life is filled with abundance. I am a tither. Because I'm a good steward of God's money, I'm able to lend and not borrow. I have enough to pay my bills, Give to support the kingdom of God, labors in ministry, and those in need. Thank you, Father, for bringing me from credit to cash so that I may live a more abundant, debt-free life. In Jesus' name, amen. Everybody shout out, debt-free. Debt -free. That's me. Would you welcome Pastor B as she comes at this time? Come on, give her some love.
Praise the Lord. I just want to thank everyone who uh, showed up last night for Pastor's birthday party. We had a wonderful time. Everyone did such a fantastic job. I, I don't want to start naming who did what. You know who you are. We really, really do appreciate uh, all of those who came and lend their support. We, we just really want to thank you. Well, here are a few announcements. On uh, uh, next Sunday, which is our fifth Sunday, which is uh, May the 30th, this is what we call our Youth Sunday. And on Youth Sunday, uh, we also have a baptismal service. So if you've never been water baptized and you would want to uh, participate in water baptism, there's a sign-up sheet at the welcome desk. Go ahead and sign up there. And also on next Sunday, uh, our youth choir will be ministering. And parents, if you have a child in pre-K through 12th grade, they're going to be practicing this week, uh, today, today uh, after service for 45 minutes, and also this coming uh, Thursday evening uh, from 6 to 6.45 on this coming Thursday. So we want our children to be prepared, so please allow them to practice again uh, today and as well as on Thursday. Also on fifth Sunday is uh, hats off to Victoria's Living. So next Sunday you can wear what your favorite hat. Amen? Amen. On June the 5th, we're going to be offering a gardening class. So those of you who would like to start gardening, uh, it will be on June 5th, a Saturday from 4 until 6. Now all you need to do is bring a pencil. And you don't even have to have a garden that you dig in the ground. You can, it, they, she's going to help teach you how to garden in pots and also in bags. And I'm not just telling you something that uh, I've heard of, but I've seen uh, Liz McEntee's garden at home, and it's pots and bags all over the place. And I've eaten the collard greens, I've eaten the cucumbers, and they're really delicious. So be here on June the 5th from 4 until 6. There's a sign-up sheet in the back. She wants to get some information so that she can send a reminder out to you. Uh, on uh, June the 6th is going to be our Children's Church kickoff. You know, during the, pan during the pandemic, a lot of things shifted and changed. And uh, we've started the Children's Sunday School at 9 on Sunday mornings. But on June the 6th, we're going to have our Children's Church where all the kids will no longer be in the service, but they'll be over in the children's church. They'll have their own service. But this is for uh, kindergarten through um, fifth grade, fifth grade. Now, as we more people return and we can have a bigger staff, we'll have the younger children. So we need your help. We need everybody's help, all hands on deck, to help us with our children's ministry. Uh, also, there's going to be a men's breakfast on June the 20th, which is Father's Day. So men, I want you, I'm sorry? Is it, twin, what day? The 19th? It's not going to be on Sunday? Okay, I'm sorry, Juneteenth. Juneteenth, uh, men's uh, breakfast. And for those of you who have uh, students that are seniors this year, we have a scholarship application form at the welcome desk. The deadline is June the 24th, so pick that up. If you are a graduating senior from high school, you fill out the application. We need it by June uh, the 24th. Uh, and also, ladies, we're going to have our ladies retreat at Jordan Ranch in Schulenburg, Texas, and it's going to be October the 7th through the 9th. So please sign uh, the sign-up sheet so we can get that information out to you. You'll be able to register on the uh, sign-up on the Realm. Uh, but I need your email and your text information. Amen? Well, at this time, I'd like to recognize guests who are visiting for the very first time. We're just so grateful that you have chosen to be with us today. I just want to recognize this couple in the back. They were such a blessing to me. You know that during the pandemic, I had to close our school down. And uh, this couple came, and I put on Facebook Marketplace, and this couple came in, and they purchased some things uh, from, from our school. And you know, she told me that uh, we're going to visit. Well, you know, people say that sometimes, but they honored their word, and they showed up today. And I just want to thank you so much for being true to your word. 
God bless you. Blessings upon you. Are there any other first-time visitors that it's your first time to visit Anointed Faith Family Church? We want to thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, God bless you. We just hope that everything that was said or done today would help increase your spiritual growth. God bless you. All right, now let me say something about them hats. Now, I know it may be your favorite hat, but if it got some writing on it that don't uh, line up with, with uh, Christian stuff, don't, don't wear no hat up in here like that. You say, well, Pastor, no way. I'm just putting it out there. Be careful. You wear your cap or whatever. Make sure it's something edifying uh, to people. Can I get a better amen than that? All right. All right, I'd like to extend one more invitation before we go. For those who would like to be a member of this church, you'd like to join Anointed Faith Family Church. If that's you, would you get up from where you are and come on home? We'd like to welcome you to the family. Yay! Come on in, come on in to the kingdom of God. Come on in, oh, give Jesus your heart. Come on in. You can have a brand new start here today. Let Jesus have his way. Come on in. Oh, 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 yes. Come on in to the kingdom of God. Come on in. Oh, give Jesus your heart. Come on in. You can have a brand new start here today. Let Jesus have his way. Come on. Y'all help me say, come on in to the kingdom of God. Come on in. Oh, give Jesus your heart. Come on. Come on in. You can have a brand new start here today. Let Jesus have his way. Come on. Come on in, come on in, to the kingdom of God, come on in, oh, give Jesus your heart, come on, come on in, you can have a brand new start, here today let Jesus have his way, come on, whoa, 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 whoa. Come on in, oh, 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 come on in, to the kingdom of God, come on in, oh, give Jesus your heart, come on, come on in, you can have a brand new start, here today, let Jesus have his way, come on in, everybody say, oh, oh, Have his way. Come on. Woo! Everybody order. Everybody order. Everybody order. Come on. Yeah. 
come on in. He's here today. Let him have his way. Come on, 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 come on in. Come on. Come on in, here today, let Jesus have his way. Come on in, here today, let Jesus have his way. Come on, come on in. Thank you. I, I want to say, before I present these beautiful people here, uh, y'all don't know how it made me feel for y'all to show up at my birthday party. From the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for all the gifts, for the love, I mean, you showed it. You put it on. You put you put on the dog last night, and I have to tell you the truth. We danced last night. We 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. We did we did the uh, we did the we did the what we do, honey? What's that name of that that song? The that dance. Wobble. The Tucker. We did the Tucker, Tucker dance. We did the wobble. We the did shuffle, the, the Michael Jackson shuffle. The, Har the Harlem shovel, the Michael Jackson's, whatever he did. <laughs> we did it last night. We had games, man. We played games. Oh, my God. People won money. At my party, people won money. Ain't that the kind of party you want to go to? All right, next year, next year. Don't be playing around. Come on. Thank you so much for your love. Appreciate it. Now, turning to our. Oh, I want to say. Oh, go ahead, baby. About his birthday party, the highlight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OMG. Was a split. Y'all yeah. missed it. Let me tell you why you missed it. No, 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 no. <laughs> this one right here. Don't, don't, don't do it this morning. Don't do it this morning. No, no. Don't. But you know, we had a dance contest. And when this little lady right here did the split, oh my goodness, it hurt me. <laughs> but she did it, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. What did you say, Lynn? And then she got up. It's one thing to go down. <laughs> yeah, it's one thing to go down, but it's another thing to come up. <laughs> Amen. But we had a wonderful time. We had fun, man. And, and fun. Before, before you... Uh, presenter, I, I may had one more announcement. I'm sorry. Okay, go ahead. On June 6th, we're going to have SWAP. That's Seniors with a Purpose. It's single, sing, Singles with a Purpose. Singles SWAP. And uh, it will be on June the 6th. It'll be right after service. So if you are single and you know you have a purpose, we need you to be here in attendance. I, mean, I want to thank our, our bass player today. What's your name, son? John. John, John Allen, John, man, you, you thump a mean baby. Sean, Sean Allen, welcome. Thank you for being here today. All right, look here. I'm honored to be your pastor, not your master. And I commit myself, and we commit ourselves to teach you and feed you. Look at me. <laughs> feed you the word of God. You can't keep your eyes off of her. Oh, you're, oh, you're here for support. No wonder, you know, that's why. Well, you go ahead and look at her. We commit ourselves to teach you and feed you the Word of God so that you can grow. And the idea is to grow. grow. Amen. Grow, man. Grow in God. Get strong in the Lord and power of His might. Amen. Y'all stretch your hands. Pray over my sister. Father, we thank you. 
We declare that my sister is blessed and cannot be cursed above only and not beneath. We thank you, Lord, that you're going to use her mightily in these last days to serve you all the days of her life. In Jesus' name. See that young lady right there? Follow, you, follow her and she'll get down some information so we can know where you are and we know how to catch up with you. Have y'all enjoyed service today? We're we going to get on out of here. We're going to get on out of here. Amen. Right now. So let's, let's all stand. Pastor Chris, come on. Close us out. Amen. Amen. If you love your church, say whoop whoop. Amen. Listen, when you get a chance, go to the service on YouTube. Like and share. Let others know what we are doing here in Tomball, Texas. Amen. We are God's favorite. Amen. We are God's favorite. Amen. Lift your hands for the blessing. Father, we just thank you for such an anointed word today, God. Bless us, Lord God, and let your favor shine upon us. In Jesus' name, amen. It's prayer time. If you need prayer, please come to the front. It's prayer time.